mayors pledge to electrify 50% of city fleets by 2030. We've got so much in the way of variety of what cities have. There's, there's so many of those. I don't even know if all of those really have adequate production capacity to hit those numbers. It's an emergency. Like nobody, nobody is in the space of trusting EVs right now. So your average police officer on an eight hour shift probably drives a hundred to 200 miles. Okay. That's really in the sweet spot. But then if that vehicle is then being put on a level two charger, then it has to sit there for a few hours, right? Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm here today with engineer Mike Herzog. How's it going, Mike? Great Wednesday. Good to be here, David. Oh, glad to have you. Okay, let's uh, let's skip over to mayors pledge to electrify 50% of city fleets by 2030. Uh, increase charging 500% by 2035. So this was a commitment from nearly 350 U.S. mayors as part of the Climate Mayors Program to electrify at least 50% of municipal fleets by 2030, that's six years from now, and boost EV chargers by 500% by 2035. You know, that's 11 years from now. I think that shouldn't be a big challenge to have five times as many EV chargers in the next 11 years. I, I, I think the priority is a slam dunk um, in that period. I mean, just one, well, there aren't that many of them to start with, but even even at any type of dedicated program, you're going to hit that milestone pretty quickly. You know, uh, electrifying the fleets, 50% of the fleets. I mean, you've got so much in the way of variety of what cities have. They have everything from buses, they have dump trucks. You look here, we have snow removal vehicles. You have things to clean the street. There's, there's so many of those. I don't even know if all of those really have adequate production capacity to hit those numbers. Do you know what I mean? It's one thing to see like Tesla pumping out cars, but it's a whole nother thing. You know, you look at every time Tesla's released a new car, you know, the news always comes out about what kind of trouble they're in. Like we've been talking about the Cybertruck. Well, they have all these orders. I mean, obviously if they could deliver a million Cybertrucks to people tomorrow, they would put them all in their hands, right? You know, but it just doesn't happen like that. It's just like, They've got tens of thousands of orders for the Tesla Semi. You know, it's going to take a long time for them to ever put those out to the market. That's one of the challenges here, and especially here in the U.S. when you have the big three automakers dragging their heels on really trying to deliver electric vehicles. Ford is doing a lot with their pro division, but you see a lot of separate companies like Mullen Automotive makes nothing but basically commercial EVs, and they're starting to deliver some. But it's a challenge to get all those to these various cities. Yeah, and it, I, I've seen, so I, I see a lot a lot of this from cities and what they're asking for. And it's very, very common. People request, I help us electrify our fleet. What are use cases? And I, it's just what you said so much. I, when you when you think of a city vehicle, you think, okay, uh, meter reader, you know, some, something like that. Or a, a business type car, here we're going to go deliver. Um, we're going to, you know, run inspections, whatever that is. But city fleets are huge uh, and and big big vehicles so i think i think there is an opportunity because one if anything most city use cases like it's a very defined daily pattern so i mean you can really like okay this this vehicle this ev meets the needs or it doesn't meet the needs of what do i want to do so it's not like you and me where you know maybe i do need to go down to kansas city like no we're we're in omaha um if it's a city vehicle it's going to drive in in omaha um, that's that's where it's going to go, and that's what's going to happen with it. So, it's 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 a flip, right? I mean, on one hand, it's it's perfect. It's captive. It parks in the same place every night. It parks in a secure facility that you can adjust or you know build charging networks in it if you want to. Probably drives about the same mileage every day, or or has a very defined cap on the amount of mileage it's going to cover every day. Um, but on the same hand, I've heard talk to people at cities go before, and this is a big concern in the space. If it's an emergency. Like nobody, nobody is in the space of trusting EVs right now. It's like if I need that vehicle to go and I need no ifs, ands, or ets about it, like we're going to buy gas, we're going to buy diesel. And that's what it looks like. So we'll, we'll see a city kind of that emergency element starts to get, get into this conversation too, of how many of these vehicles did say we're not even going to qualify. Like we're not, we're not going to trust this to an EV until we really know what the heck's going on with it.
So anyway, that's all to say. It's just it's an interesting space right now where people are thinking about it. And we're, we're going to electrify fifty percent. And well, what does that actually mean? Well, you know, if you let's take a use case. So let's let's look at like law enforcement. So your average police officer on an eight hour shift probably drives a hundred to two hundred miles. Okay, that's really in the sweet spot. But then if that vehicle is then being put on a level two charger, then it has to sit there for a few hours, right? Yep. Um, so that means that vehicle is not available to go right to the next shift. So the next shift has to skip using that vehicle. If that was a situation where they would normally keep rotating out the cars, I don't know how common that really is. But then if you looked at like highway patrolmen who on an eight hour shift probably drive 200 to as much as 500 miles, maybe an EV doesn't fit. Maybe that doesn't work. You know, it, it's it's really a, uh, a little bit of a different situation. Or they adjust the distances that maybe a highway patrolman might drive. And, you know, to, but like you're saying, they should know pretty much. It's like, hey, if you work this district, this is how many miles you're going to be driving that car. Now, they may not really track that at this point, but EVs would definitely track that because EVs are all about analytics. You're, you've got a data capture machine. That's one of the things people hate about. The other huge one with any any fleet and any any fleet operator will tell you it's idling. And, and any way where you can cut down idling time and that passive gas burn, like those are those are huge, you know, big juicy meatballs to reduce costs and your O and M costs for any fleet. Because guys and gals, they don't they don't turn their trucks off. Right. They let them run. They and I'm not that's not trying to be too critical, but like climate control, you know, inside, like yeah, it's cold outside. I want to keep the cab warm. Great. It's burning hot outside. I want I want some AC in the cab when I have, have to put that forward. So any way they can reduce their idling time, um, I, I think people are going to jump all over, which is which is a good thing. Well, and one of the nice things too is you can have that electric motor not running, but you could still be running the the air conditioning. But used to be in a cop car, if you were when it was hot out, you'd pull somewhere and you'd leave it idling. You might pop the hood. Because you wanted more airflow on the engine while it was sitting there to help keep it cooled down. And then you close the hood before you take off again. Um, I don't think they do that anymore, but that, that used to be a thing 30 years ago. But 350 city mayors is a pretty big number. I wonder if, of course, it doesn't give me a breakdown of the mayors. The article doesn't. I'd be really curious if any of our Nebraska mayors you'd probably find out it'd be somebody like uh platt or something like that but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised i know i know omaha is looking their climate action plan was just published and they're they're looking at that stuff i that that deep of a that deep of a bench of mayors i bet i bet we've got a handful around here hi i'm david with eb world news if you like this video then please press the like button if you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.